Hello, welcome to another video from the conscientious biologist, Ben Gallagher. Now this one looks at the structure of DNA, and you may remember that way back near the start of phase one, there was a playlist called proteins, which had three lessons in it. The first one of those was looking at DNA, looking at what it is, looking at its role in the creation of proteins. That was a really, really good introduction to DNA and proteins. But for your GCSE, we need to make sure you've got a really decent level of detail on top of that. So this is the first of two videos that really go hand in hand and you need to watch them together. This one looks at the structure of DNA, including complementary base pairing, which is how DNA forms double strands. You follow on from this one with the second lesson, which is on the detail of protein synthesis. As I said, this is part of the GCSE specification. As always, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you. So let's start off with a very quick recap from those really, really important phase one videos on proteins. And let's look at why DNA is important. Well, to do that, we need to go back to what cells are. And a cell is just a small compartment. So we've got these things. And to make that small compartment, you only really need two things. You've got the cell membrane, which is the skin of the cell. It holds it together and it controls some of the things that can come in and out by uh, diffusion, by active transport. And you've got the cytoplasm, which is the liquid that fills up the cell and it creates an environment, a 3D environment in which all the chemicals can move around and interact so a cell can have metabolism. But essentially that's all a cell is. It's this enclosed compartment. Now where DNA is so vital is that for a cell to be properly functional, for it to be alive and have a metabolism, that compartment needs to be able to make some very specific proteins because those proteins will do everything the cells need and so importantly proteins do everything that exact red flashing icon has come up in so many of my videos proteins are the driving force really behind life it's the proteins that do the metabolic reactions that form the structures that make things within cells proteins are so important why does that relate to dna well, the DNA is found in chromosomes and DNA is the instructions for how to make protein. So without the DNA, without the instructions, a cell can't make its proteins, which means it can't do any of its metabolic life processes and it dies. It's simply not a living thing. OK, um, so the DNA is vitally important because of that. But of course, you have to have the ribosomes which can read the DNA. Those are the builders that actually make the proteins following the instructions in the DNA so that those proteins can do everything. So why is DNA important? It's the instructions for how the cell can live its life. So here's the detail. You'll probably never come across what's in this video before. Not Certainly not if you haven't done it in your class already, because this doesn't really come up, come up in key stage three. So this is new information and it's quite complex. So like all written language, DNA is a code. If you look at what I've written up there, we've got the words in the title, structure of DNA. But look at what's actually there. It's just some squiggles and lines. The S is literally just a double curve. The, the T is one that goes down, curves a bit at the bottom, and then a line across. Well, who decided that that down with a curvy bottom and a line across it makes a T sound? It's just sort of arbitrarily agreed. Our language, our written language, is based on these symbols that you've learned to decode from when you were very young, when you learned to read. But it is just a code of squiggles and lines. DNA is exactly the same. It's a code. The difference, though, is that instead of letters like our written language, it's written in chemicals. And those chemicals are called nucleotides. We talked about those when we did the digestive system unit because you need to digest the DNA of other organisms using nuclease enzyme, if you remember, to snip up the DNA to get the nucleotides back so you can use them to build your own DNA. So hopefully you know about nucleotides. But just like in our alphabet, we have 26 letters and we can use random combinations of those 26 letters to make our words, to make all the various different forms of words and meanings that we need. DNA doesn't have 26 letters. It just has four different types of nucleotide, which are called bases. So the base, is a chemical that sticks out of a nucleotide that makes it unique. But there's only four of those, and they're these. They're adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, okay? Those four over there. Now, 
Each one of those is a nucleotide. The bit that sticks out the top of it, you can see that I've made all four slightly different shapes. Those are the bases. So the nucleotide has a base sticking out. A nucle uh, the base is part of the nucleotide, like my nose is part of my face. My face would be like the nucleotide. That's just an identifying feature of it. OK, so we've got these four. Now, you don't need at GCSE to remember those names. You do need to know the letters, though. So if you did want to quickly write those down, do it if you just want to get ahead for A level uh, or pause the video and do that. But I'm going to get rid of them now because you only need to know them as A, T, C and G. But you do need to know those. OK, now, just like in our written language, we combine letters to make words. So when I'm writing, let's say, bases on the end of that last line there, bases, I took a B, I took an A, took an S, took an E, took another S, wrote the word bases. That means something you now know what a base is, okay? Same in DNA. You just take the different nucleotides with the different bases and you rearrange them to take your meaning. So if you were making a piece of DNA, you might take a guanine, a cytosine, a thymine, another cytosine, adenine, guanine, guanine, thymine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. That might be your little bit of code. That might be the equivalent of your word. I wrote bases using lang um, letters from the English language. I can use nucleotides to write my little section of DNA. Okay, so what we've created there is a piece of genetic code, which we would call a strand of DNA. Now, um, this particular strand that I've put there this would code for four amino acids. I've put 12 bases in my little bit of code there, and I've said it will code for four amino acids. So the quicker among you might realize something straight away. It takes three bases to name an amino acid. So because I've got 12, you break that up into threes, four lots of three, you've got four, four amino acids that that codes for. That's really important when we come to the next video on protein synthesis. OK, so that's a strand, but DNA is double stranded. You may have heard about that before. It's not just this single line like this. So there must be a second line. And that second strand forms by something called complementary base pairing. Now, the word complementary we've come across before when we talked about proteins and enzymes. Complementary means they fit together. So the substrate and the active site of an enzyme are complementary. Well, look back to how I've drawn my nucleotides and you may notice something about the shapes of the bases. You might see that they do come in complementary pairs. You can see that A is complementary to T. Look at the shapes, how I've drawn them. One is the spiky arrow head, one's the receiver for that. <clears throat> so those two are complementary in shapes and C and G are also complementary to each other. They're rounded and they're scooped so they can fit together. So that means when you build a second line, if you look back to the strand that I've got there, the G, the guanine at the start there, would complementary base pair to a cytosine, to a C. They would fit together. The next one on my coding strand, the C, would have a G, the T would have an A. And go in and fill the rest on as you go along. C would have a G and so on. We're now to an A, which would have a T, the G would have a C, the C would have a G, the T would have an A. We formed a second strand that matches the first in its shape by its complementary base sequences. They look together. We've got a double strand of DNA and that's how DNA is found. But we don't stop there because to take up a bit less room, what happens is that double strand, which you can imagine it like a rope ladder. I'm sure you've all seen rope ladders that twists itself around in both directions to make this spiral, this DNA double helix that's just above my head here. OK, so this is the DNA double helix shape that I'm sure you've seen in loads of sort of X-Men and Marvel films and stuff. Any scientific film somewhere in the film, there's a picture of a DNA molecule like this that pops up. And if you look at it, you can see in the double helix, you can see the C's and the G's paired up and the A's and the T's paired up. So this should be very logical how you get from a single strand that codes the word, look back to the original strand I put up there, the G, C, T, C, A, G, G, blah, blah, blah. That's the code, that's the genetic word that needs to be read. The second strand there is, that's actually there for when the DNA divides, so you can split them in half and then rebuild each one. But don't worry about why it's double-stranded for now. It's that first strand that was the code, 
second one that goes with it, they twist around to form this double helix. Now, if you take that long double helix molecule and you keep just twisting it and turning it around, you can condense it really down until you get a chromosome. So that's how chromosomes fit into this thing. So a chromosome is built of highly twisted DNA strands, DNA double strand. And of course, the chromosomes are inside the nucleus, which are in a cell. OK, so hopefully from this slide, you can see the exact biochemical structure of DNA and how that relates to things like chromosomes in the nucleus and how it all fits into the cell. Take a screenshot of this. This is really, really important. But that's pretty much it for this video. So I said at the start that this is the first of two videos that really, really go hand in hand. Um, I could have done the two as one video, but it would have made it very long. But this is so important that you understand this DNA structure before we go on to looking at the detail of protein synthesis. But that's the one I want to head you, uh, want you to head to straight away, please. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Like this video if it was useful, but certainly the next one on protein synthesis will be really useful. This was the introduction to that. Also head over to my Facebook site if you're on Facebook. There's some really interesting little infographics on biology that I've put on there. Thanks a lot.